What is going on everybody? It's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 15th of January in 2019, as well as briefly looking at two articles talking about JP Morgan and Wells Fargo's earnings reports that did come out today. So for all you out there that don't know, we are in the midst of earnings reports, earnings season right now in the stock market with a lot of the big banks reporting earnings this week. We have Bank of America, I believe, later on this week, Goldman Sachs, and a bunch of other big banks. So it's very important, in my opinion, guys, to keep an eye on earnings to gauge how companies are doing in terms of their financials. Are they missing expectations? Are they exceeding expectations? Or are they right in line? line with expectations and why you need to keep an eye on this guys because this will help you gauge the entire economy and gauge the entire stock market on you know how things are doing right guys because if most companies are missing on their earnings that is not a good sign for the economy as a whole and of course the stock market but if a lot of companies are killing their earnings blowing earnings out of the water that's a very good sign for the economy and of course the stock market. So before we do get into this video, smash that like button. If you guys do enjoy this daily content that I'm producing, it really does help the channel grow. And I do appreciate it a lot from you guys if you do smash that like button. So let's get started with today's video. So I'm sure you all know this by now, but today we had yet again, another green day in the stock market, despite the poor earnings from these banks that we're going to be talking about a little bit later on in this video. So we see here the SPX guys was up around 1.07%, up around $28 on the day. The Dow Jones is up around 155 points, up around 0.65% on the day. And the NASDAQ, I believe, was up around 110 to 120 points at the close. We can see here, guys, it opened up the day roughly at around 65.75 and did close the day at around 66 80. So it was up around 100, 105 points at the close. I do believe that was around a 1.2, 1 1.3% 1 uh, day today um, in terms of the NASDAQ. So this bull run, well, not really a bull run, but this uh, recovery run that we've been seeing from after Christmas, December 26th to be exact, is still intact, guys. If we take a look at this 20-day, one-hour chart, so we can see a little bit uh, close of the action that's been going down since this day that I just talked to you guys about the 26th we can see it's nothing but an uptrend of higher highs and higher lows and remember in yesterday's video guys I was talking about this pattern in the SPX of you know it's gapping down during the uh, opening of the market and then closing right by uh, where it topped off the previous day right you know remember we were talking about this right the gap down here and then it closes at the resistance from the previous day, the gap down here, and it closes right around the resistance from the previous day. But today, we actually gapped up and we pushed up to another higher high and we broke out of that 2600 level. That was a kind of a resistance level, right? We had trouble getting above it here, here, here. And the fact that we pushed above it today is just insinuating that this uptrend is still intact, guys. And especially since we bounced on the 50 SMA here to make yet again another higher high. So what do I want to see, guys, in terms of a rejection in the SPX? Well, I want to see if it does end up getting rejected at this previous support, which is now a new resistance at around 26.20, with the next one being at around 26.35. So these are two levels, guys, that, you know, if the SPX does break out of these levels, um, the next resistance would be at the 180 SMA right around 2650 maybe 2675 at that point but again guys since it is getting a bit overbought earnings season are coming out pretty strong over these next couple of weeks a lot of big companies are reporting earnings and if they do report 
poor earnings, right? This could have a negative effect on the stock market, thus having it being rejected, you know, right around this level. But again, only time will tell. We have to wait and see what these companies do report. If the majority of them are bad in terms of the earnings, guys, that gives me the fundamental reason that the stock market is most likely going to be heading down over the next couple of months. But we have to wait and see again what these companies are reporting. So the SPX guys, major resistance right now, literally the level we are at right now at these two trend lines. Watch those very, very closely, guys. So if we take a look at the Dow Jones, you know, very similar situation. We are at a resistance that was a previous support back in June from this sell-off that we saw. Right around $24,100 is the support that was a support, right? And obviously, since we broke beneath it, it is now a new resistance. And that's the level that we are at right now in terms of the Dow Jones. So if we do break that level, guys, the next level I'm going to be looking at is at around 24,400. And we can maybe say 24,000 200 before 24,400 as well. So there are a couple more resistances for the Dow Jones to break before it is in a full on reversal pattern to the upside, right? So we would have to break this one, this one, as well as this one. And then, of course, break the 180 SMA resistance as well. So just like the SPX, guys, this one is making higher highs, higher lows. It bounced on the 50 SMA and it's continuing the uptrending pattern that it's been on from the 26th of December when we saw that massive sell-off in the month of December in general. So taking a look at NQ, guys, this one broke the top of this channel that we were talking about on the 180 four hour chart here and we can see guys this red uh, trend line is indicating that channel that I'm talking about and have been talking about over the past couple of videos right we had trouble breaking out of that channel here here as well here and now we just bounced on the 180 SMA push for a higher high thus pushing us out of that downwards trending channel but this does not mean guys that we're reversing to the upside quite yet guys because again there are a lot of other factors right now that could potentially push the stock market down especially with earnings season being right now. So I guess you can say on a technical basis, we broke out of that channel, but it's still in that same uh, vicinity of where we did break out of this channel last time, which followed by another, um, you know, lower low in terms of this chart, guys. So I really wouldn't be surprised if we did peak out in the NASDAQ right around this level in these next coming days, once this run does start to come to a halt, because it is guys I know a lot of you out there think this run is going to last forever but literally we've done this in the past right guys it might have not been as long as what we've been experiencing from the end of December but it's been you know pretty decent right we can see this one lasted from 11.22 up to around 12.3 so that lasted about 11 days this run right here from 10.29 up to around 11.8 so we are due in my opinion for a pullback and especially since we are at the top of this channel even though we did break it guys we are still technically at the top of this channel which is a solid um resistance point so all of these uh you know indices guys they're still at major resistance levels they're all at the top of their channels and with earnings reports coming out the economy slowing down all the stuff that we've been experiencing with china the trade war trump you know, Fed, everything that's been going on, I do still see downside coming, guys. And, you know, this is something that we all have to just wait and see what happens, right? We can't predict the future, obviously. We just have to see what the data is telling us. We have to see, are the Feds going to raise interest rates again? We have to see, is Trump going to come with it to a trade war agreement with the president of China? There's just a bunch of things right now that are just up in the air still in the market. And I do think these will drag the markets down, you know, in the next couple of days slash 
week. So let's talk about what I traded today very quickly. Then we'll talk about those two articles. So for those of you all that are in the Discord chat, you know that I traded Gush today, guys. This was a very quick 2.2% trade in Gush. And for those of you guys that don't know, Gush is an oil and gas-based ETF, and it trades on XOP. And whenever XOP is going up in price, that's when Gush is going up in price. This is why, you know, you can see the charts are very similar, right? Take a look at XOP's chart, then take a look at Gush's chart, right? It's pretty much the same exact thing because they really just move in the same direction because Gush copies what XOP does in a simple way of, you know, stating things, right? In the simple terms of uh, putting it, right? Gush copies what XOP does. So why I got into Gush, guys? Well, I got in because of this pullback that we saw from around 1208 all the way down to 1180, opening up around a 2.3% margin of profit. And once I saw Gush holding the 180 SMA and starting to push back up and ultimately breaking the EMA and the 50 SMA, that is when I saw potential upside in a reversal pattern and, you know, a continuation of the uptrend from the previous day here, guys. So I ended up actually getting in a little bit early on this gush trade. I got in at around 1182, I believe, you know, once we did start to peak above the EMA and once we already bounced on the 180 SMA and from 1182, guys, and moved pretty quick up to the previous resistances at around 1209. So I didn't actually end up adding more to my position, right? And I always talk about scaling into your positions. Well, this time, guys, it moved so quickly that I didn't even add or even have time to add more to the position. So from about 1182, you know, I set a limit sell at this previous resistance at around 1208, I believe my order was. And we obviously hit 1211, so they ended up filling at 1208 uh, right there. But from 1182, we can see the profit was right around 2 to 2.2%, right? I think it was like, yeah, see, it was around 2.1% on the day. And for those of you guys that don't know, my daily goal is around 3% on the low side. I did get a little bit lower than 3% today and yesterday I got a little bit lower at 0.4% so the past two days in terms of my profit you know they haven't been too great right but I'm still happy with what I'm able to get and I always say that profit is profit guys right any profit you can pull from the market that is a successful day in my personal opinion, and I'm very happy with the 2% that I did end up, um, you know, taking today. And I was very intrigued by this pullback on Cron, and I almost pulled the trigger on a Cron trade earlier on in the day, but I didn't do it. And from this pullback, I'm talking about this massive one right here from 1386 all the way to 1310. I saw a higher low right here. I was about to jump into the trade. I would have made a solid gain right here, but again, shoulda, woulda, coulda, you didn't make the money if you didn't take the trade, right? So I didn't take the trade here, guys, but I figured I'd share this one anyway. And for those of you guys that did, end up trading Cron today on this little bounce back, this, you know, big pullback and bounce back play, you know, shout out to you because that was a pretty solid move in terms of Cron. And I kind of did wish I pulled the trigger because if I did, I would have made around 4% on the day if I did buy in right around here when I was thinking about buying in. But, you know, no excuses, guys. I didn't buy into this trade. Therefore, I did not, um, you know, make money on it, right? Very, very simple. So let's talk about these two articles talking about JP Morgan and Wells Fargo's earnings report very quickly before. I do end off this video. So let's take a look what happened today. And JP Morgan, I believe they did report their earnings first early on in the day. And just to sum it up very quickly, guys, I'm not going to go through this entire article. I just want to just go with, through these bullet points very quickly. Um, JP Morgan missed on their earnings, right? You can see it right from the headline. JP Morgan misses profit expectations for the first time in 15 quarters. So that's a pretty big uh, stat there, guys. Typically, Typically, JP Morgan is very strong in terms of financials. They're hitting their profits a lot. And the fact that, you know, we see here they missed their profit, you know, this could signal the slowing 
in the economy based off of you know this earnings right obviously you know it's not based on one stock but if we see a bunch of stocks missing profit like JP Morgan did you know this could signal the slowing of um, this could signal expectations of slowing economic growth so we can see here JP Morgan Chase posted quarterly profits below analyst expectations for the first time in 15 quarters the banks generated 1.9 dollars per share and profit for the fourth quarter of 2018 below the two dollar and 20 cent per share average estimate of analyst survey by Refinitiv. So that's a pretty big miss, guys, about a 22 cent miss in terms of their earnings per share. Let's see. The uh, the biggest shortfall appeared to come from the New York Bank's trading division where fixed income trading produced $1.86 billion in revenue compared to $2.2 billion estimates. So they missed huge on that particular metric. And um, let's see. Analyst Peppered Bank Manage, uh, management Tuesday on how it sees loan losses developing in 2019. The firm set aside $1.55 billion for credit losses, an 18% increase from a year earlier, and $250 million more than the analyst's $1.3 billion estimate. So pretty much, guys... You know, they missed on their profit for the first time in 15 quarters. They missed on earnings per share. And they also missed on their revenue for their trading division. So not too great of a quarter for JP Morgan. Let's take a look at what Wells Fargo did. So Wells Fargo beat analyst expectations in terms of earnings per share, which is a pretty good estimate or a metric rather, but they missed in terms of revenue reporting $20.98 billion dollars in revenue in the quarter this past quarter in uh what was it 2018 so earlier guys wells fargo reported fourth quarter profit of 121 per share they missed their revenues right there profit of 6.1 billion was down from 6.2 billion recorded in the fourth quarter of 2017 that's just issuing the slowing in growth of the banking sector right guys you know the profit missed well it's so smaller profit from the same quarter a year ago not too great of a sign and uh and you know terms of growth and of course banks aren't you know growth companies per se right they're more of value plays right they're not going to be growing a crazy amount year over year but the fact that they didn't grow at all is not too great of a sign in terms of wells fargo um you know for their profit so very brief very quick guys you know they hit earnings per share they beat expectations on that but they did not beat revenue so not too great of you know earnings reports for JP Morgan I would say that Wells Fargo had a better earnings report um, than JP Morgan because at least they beat in terms of earnings per share JP Morgan missed on profit and earnings per share so um you know not too great of a report for JP Morgan a little bit better for Wells Fargo but still not too great of a report for for them either so that's pretty much it for today's video guys if you did enjoy it feel free to smash that like button leave a comment down below let me know what you guys think about the earnings season what companies are you looking out for what companies what stocks did you trade today i would love to love to know as well as subscribe for future content and turn on that notification bell so you guys get notified when i'm posting these daily update videos so i'll catch you guys in the next video i hope you all have a great night. Peace out.